Hi, Tom. Hi there. This might be the uh, we we've done some really short meetings. This might be the world shortest. The BZA meetings are usually pretty darn short. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially if we don't have a pending application, and our January meetings tend to be the minutes from the previous year and the election of officers. So mm -hmm. we had a two minute meeting in person. You're, you're you're very clear with people when they come in to ask about zoning and that helps. Yeah, I try. Okay. Do we have a quorum? I think that the criteria makes it a lot easier because it's not my decision. Yeah. There's five criteria and if and they can decide if they meet it and if I had said, you know, oh, I don't know if that's a good case for a variance, they could say, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it anyway. So, do you get those? Um, sometimes, but I mean, we don't get a heck of a lot of variances. I think that the criteria that they established, being that it's weighted criteria, and there's five of them, mm -hmm. uh, I think that clarified things. I was told that it was a variance factory before that that we were cranking out the variances prior to the criteria. And that was before I started working for the town in 2013. So um, you I'm are sure the be... hammer. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but I think Debbie and Roger and um, the Marks, Mark Mall and Mark Stringfellow, because mm -hmm. they've been on BZA for so long, they could probably speak to that more than I could. Good. Hey, Billy, how you doing? Tim, how are you? Good. I see we have a call-in user. Who just called in? That's me, Mark Stringfellow. Hello, Mark. Hello. Who's this? Is that Mark Stringfellow? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I had a call in, I couldn't get yes. in on the web link. Oh. Does that work for you? Chair? Be able to chair the meeting That's by phone? Fine. Okay. Sure. Do we have a quorum? Can we start the meeting? We have a quorum. Um, Mark Mall said he was going to attend. I don't see that he's here yet, but it's on you if you want to. Start with Adam and he can join us. So, uh, let's, give him a, let's give him a few minutes. Mark, this is Roger. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Got my microphone on then. Okay. Let's give Mark Mall a couple you. minutes. Happy New Year to everyone. New Year. Happy New Year. Year. Yeah, I hope this year isn't as weird as last year. I know. Don't jinx it. <laughs> That's like saying the W word. Yes. <laughs> it is. Hoping this is the year that we can uh, start seeing people in person again. That would be so cool. It's not starting up. Let's hope. Yeah. I, I don't for, know for if Omicron. I would know how to act. <laughs> right? Sorry, Lindsay. <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> what do I do with my hands at this meeting? Not in, I can't be in my pajama bottoms. Right. That's the main thing. <laughs> I have quite the collection of yoga pants and pajama <laughs> bottoms now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've forgotten how to not be super comfortable. <laughs> right. We saw a chart on the sales of of slippers, bedroom slippers, and they uh, over the last year, two years they've exploded. Oh, I, I mean, I bought myself a real cozy pair, and then I had to buy Chris some too. So we we're in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not sure Mark Mall is going to get on. Uh, it's five after six after, so. Uh, okay. Let's call the meeting to order, and Cynthia, if you'd like to 
do a roll call. That'd be excellent. Sure, Netherland Board of Zoning Adjustment Meeting is called to order at 7.06 p.m. Roll call. Chair Stringfellow? Here. Member Davenport? Here. Member Giblin? Here. Member Mahawil? Here. Trustee Danforth? And alternate member Cornell. Sure. Please note for the record that member Mall, or actually Vice Chair Mall, is not here yet. May attend, but is not present at this time. Okay, I'm gonna try and pull up the agenda. And if I can't, you might have to kind of guide me through this. Sure. Oh, yeah, you can't see the screen. Um, I cannot so it's see the screen. Approval of minutes. Right. Approval of minutes from April 9th, 2021 is what it is, Chair. And I can't see those minutes, so I'll have to rely on the board uh, to read them. I presume they're fairly short. They are. We did Do talk about I have a motion. To Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they were a little longer, but go ahead. I'm do sorry. I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, uh, I, uh, this is Tom Mahold. I motion that we approve the minutes without amendment. Do I have a second? I'll second. It's Julie. Okay. Okay. And we'll just go All down the. Fair. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So, the yeah. list, because <laughs> yeah, I can't see um, everyone. Um, Evan Port? Yes. <laughs> Member Giblin? Yes. Member Mahold? Yes. Do we have a Vice Chair Mall yet? Okay. Mar Chair he was there trying to is. jump on. Oh, he's trying to get, it looks like he needs to get back to audio still. Oh, he's here. Okay. Excellent. We'll let him log into the audio. Hi, Mark. Welcome to the meeting. If you can hear me, we were taking a vote for the minutes. So I'm going to keep cruising forward with the other members and then I'll come back to you. Chair Stringfellow? Yes. Alternate member Cornell? I did not attend, I abstain. Okay. And member Dan, or uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And member Mall, are you present with can us? Can you hear me? We can. Can you hear me? Can you yeah. see me? Yes. We are, uh, yes. Turn your camera down just a little bit. It's going a little bit above your head. It stops at your mustache. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. We are voting on the April 8th, 2021 minutes. And I had a motion in a second and we were just doing the roll call vote for the minutes to approve those minutes. And we're at you. Did you want to vote to approve those minutes? Is that to who? To me? Yes, sir. Yes. Sure. Yes. Thanks, Vice Chair. <laughs> Thank you. Motion passes. Minutes are approved. Okay. What's next on the agenda, Cynthia? The annual appointment of officers per bylaws, Article 8. You want to call for a public comment, a non-agenda item, just in case someone has one. I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Did you want to call for public comment on non-agenda items? I just thought that you know Kathleen's here, so I didn't know if she had a comment on non-agenda items. Yes. Thank you for noting that. Um, do we have any public comment that wants to be submitted, Kathleen? 
I think you are maybe the only member of the public who is here. No comment. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks for noting that Miranda. Uh, so. Action items appointment of officers. So we would be looking to. Take a vote on the chair and vice chair positions. Please note that Mark, who has been the ongoing chair, his term expires in June of 2022. He can certainly reapply for that. Uh, also, Billy does. Uh, his position would be coming up and uh, alternate member Roger Cornell. So those positions are posted publicly, but um, you're also able to reapply for those positions later in the year. So for a chair position um, that would if Mark were to be elected again, then it would just be until June 1st, unless he was uh, taking another term with the BZA and approved by the Board of Trustees. Okay, I'd like to open the floor for nominations uh, for chair and vice chair. That was uh, Mark Stringfellow? Yes. Yes. Okay, I, I nominate Mark Stringfellow uh, for chair. Do I have a second? Second. All second. Was that Mark Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Cynthia would like to call a roll vote. Yes, I will take a vote on that and we're going to go backwards. Trustee Danforth. Yes. Alternate member Cornell. Yes. Chair Stringfellow. Yes. Chair Mall. Yes. Member Mahol? Yes. Member Giblin? Yes. And Member Davenport? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Mark Springfellow as chair. And on Do to you. We have a motion. Excuse me, Cynthia. Oh, go ahead. What exactly what you're doing? Oh, uh, do we have a motion for vice chair? Before we do, Mark, are you willing to do it again? Are you, I presume you're talking to Mark Mall. Uh, I am. Yeah, Mark Mall, you're the uh, the only 2026 one on here. Sure. Right. Then I I nominate Mark Mall for vice chair. I second it. And that's Mark Stringfellow. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, would you like to make another roll call, Cynthia? Yes. Member Davenport? Yes. Member Giblin? Billy? Yes. I don't know what happened on my sound. Yes. Okay. Or, <laughs> Member Mahol? Yes. <laughs> yes. Vice Chair Mahol? Do you want to vote for yourself to be Vice Chair again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mark. Me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Yep. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Chair Stringfellow? Yes. Alternate Member Cornell? Yes. And Trustee Danforth? Yes. Motion passes for Mark Mull as chair. That brings us to new business, or uh, I think that's where we're at, right? Other business? Or discussion items, any discussion items for the board? 
I'm not uh, trying to uh, do is there anything? Oh. Go ahead. Cynthia, is there anything we should be aware of that might be coming up um, that, or that is something we need to keep an eye on over the next, between now and when we meet next? Something that I thought about was uh, we are trying to promote solar in the town mm -hmm. and there is a tier three variant for energy reduction. So we've seen that used, uh, I believe the community center used it. This was before my time working for the town uh, when they put on their building. In looking at SolSmart's solar regulations, they want solar and remove instructions to promote solar. So one of the things that I could see is that the variance process could take some time and um, they have a lot of recommendations and I've been going over uh, a webinar with their best management practices and things like that. And so they would you know, have to be code changes in order to support solar more. And solar is not defined in our code. It's not in the comprehensive plan. Those are best management practices. Uh, mm -hmm. So solar definition. Now something like the community center, that's a really large array up there and it's very tall. So when you look at things like, like flat roofs, that's where they could have, um, they could be more visible and that, that you know, they may seem pretty tall. Um, in most cases, solar throughout the town for residences um, and even businesses is flush mounted. And so it occurred to me to mention it to this board uh, about what you guys think about that, um, given that there is a possibility for a tier three variance, it's just not used very often. And I would say um, maybe that's relevant for a flat roof or for commercial or for a, uh, something that would be defined as a moderate or you know larger moderate uh, solar system. But is that something that the board thinks is relevant for residential solar when it's flush mounted. Um, there, there probably are some buildings that are taller than 35 feet in the town. I suspect that has happened over time. Most of those are not. When we do these reviews, they're going through they built for the building portion. I'm looking at it from a zoning perspective. The main key for me is, is it below the building height? Uh, it also goes through the fire department and they have specific regulations about uh, three feet of access um, in most cases where they can get at the roof in case they need to and it's not going to be an issue. So it is going through a lot of review, um, but I just wanted to mention that to the board and see what they think about it because it's currently plausible as a tier three variance. We, we don't get a lot of variance requests. And we, we haven't gotten, I haven't in the time that I've been working for the town, which I'm cresting into my ninth year here in April, uh, we haven't, I don't think we've had one tier three variants. So that could be building height, but it could also be setbacks uh -huh. that if somebody wanted a ground mount solar that um, they could go into the setbacks. There are a few things that could affect this board and I just wanted to open that up for discussion, not necessarily making a decision now, but just mm -hmm. kind of put that in your minds to see what you think about that in terms of the town trying to promote solar. What is the tier three variance, just to be clear exactly what you're talking about? There are different types of variances, and there are three. And uh, the main variances is what you guys are dealing with. So when there's a setback issue, uh, those very specific aspects of yard and bulk requirements, which is uh, section 16-33 in the zoning code. And the tier three variance is, uh, it is for energy reduction. So it's a specific variance, it's less expensive, um, same process, same variance process. That, that could be, you know, with respect to variances for the process, when someone comes to the board to appeal to you guys on their variance request, it's a lengthy process. So they're coming to you to request a variance from whatever aspect of 1633 that they can't meet and you're meeting and you're considering that. 
then at the next meeting, uh, in between, you know, after that initial meeting, you guys make your decision and then the findings of fact, I draft those up. They go through the attorney to make sure that they're accurate. And then we meet again to approve the minutes of the previous meeting and the findings of fact. And once the findings of fact are approved, then I can mail out a letter to them and say, okay, you can do your variance request. Given that we meet quarterly and we could meet sooner um, in the off times of a quarterly meeting, if, uh, you know, and that often happens if someone's coming for a variance, we try to bump them in sooner, but that's still a pretty lengthy process for folks. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to throw that out there and see what you think in terms of the town's desire to promote solar. In some cases, some of the requirements to expedite solar just are not feasible for the town. So, you know, they would love to see a one day review. Not going to happen. Right. <laughs> um, we have a lot of old buildings. So, you know, looking at it on a, just a, a purely administrative level or, or something inf information, you know, having the building department consider the weight of solar on old homes that may not be structurally set up for them. Uh, I think that is important that Safe Belt does review it. Uh, but I've been wanting to promote solar for a long time. And, you know, there are some lag times that we have to kind of factor in. And that was one that I had considered. There's two things I heard, Cynthia. Number one is that there's going to be, there could be some ground mount solar that might uh, eat into right away. And we'll have to consider that. And the other one is the fire department's need to have three feet uh, between the roof mm -hmm. and the panels. Um, and if anybody wants to vary from that, it'll come to us. Both accurate? Yes. Okay. Yes. It could, it could also be lot coverage. Um, yeah. That's another one of the best management practices. So there's a few aspects. 1733 in the zoning code is the yard department. So it's setbacks, building height, and maximum lot coverage by district. So if you know, you look at some places in town, like Old Town, um, people have sheds and they've, you know, built, built a lot of their lot out and they may have a very small percentage of lot coverage available. Uh, in most cases, most people are going to do flush mount on their roof and they're not going to be doing ground mount. But there are, you know, there is that possibility in some cases someone might want to do a ground mount. And would that be something that you know, I'm the board would think uh, if somebody was close to at their lot coverage, would that be something that you know, if they came forward for a variance that the board might support? Um, or just any thoughts that you have on it as I'm doing? Roger, I, I take it back. Uh, it, Roger, is anybody, are we doing anything at the planning board level? Or are we looking at our regs at all? Is there any anticipation that we would? ever change them before they get to the BZA. This is the first discussion we've had on it, and I would just suggest that Cynthia, you know, could you just kind of put together a little paragraph and where where are the points in uh, Chapter 16 or wherever else in the ordinances that we should review? And let's, uh, I think we actually have sure. to put together a package and send it out and look at it and put it on the agenda for a meeting to discuss where, what we thought about it. And maybe it's something you should talk to Steve about it, planning. Absolutely. I mean, this is something that would go before the planning commission because they have the authority on the zoning sector. And so yeah. if they were willing to promote, we haven't met yet this year. We meet uh, coming up here toward the end of the month on the 26th, I believe. And uh, I am going to put it together the summation of the best management practices that I took from the Soul Smart webinar, and a lot, and and it is those kind of aspects. It you know has to do with aesthetics, meaning, um, really wanting solar to be seen rather than hidden, mm -hmm. um, trying to remove barriers to solar that exist in zoning codes. I don't think that Netherland. Uh, overly stringent barriers to it, but I think there are some considerations. And and there are changes that need to be made in the zoning chapter, and uh, part of what needs to be discussed this year, I believe, or this year and next year is the comprehensive plan update. 
this is all kind of going to be coming at us, but uh, I just wanted to make a mention to this board specifically because you would consider variances and um, if the, if those are things that you guys could support or in a general basis or um, more discussion, but I appreciate Roger's comment of summarizing that for you guys so we could have that for the April meeting. Good. And will you please put that on the agenda as a, as other business so we can discuss that. Uh, we also have language that the BZA can take into consideration solar access as needed. But uh, Cynthia, will you let me know where the Planning Commission is because I want to go to the Planning Commission and kind of help out because I think it's really important we get as much solar as we can up here and whatever we need to do. Uh, I want the BZA and also the Planning Commission to get on board uh, to facilitate getting more solar up here, whatever that looks like. Gotcha. Yeah, thanks for your consideration. Anyone else have any comments about that? Nope, I think you're right. It's on the horizon. We, the 2021 uh, actually, is, uh, because of, of supply chain issues, the whole industry was down by 25% for 2021. But I, I think they're going to unwire uh, or un, they'll fix these problems pretty quickly. And there's a lot of projects that will resume. There's tons and tons of capital that wants to own a piece of this. Uh, so I, th I think this will be a blip and we're going to be faced. With, I'm pretty sure we'll be faced with this at some point, uh, both on the ground and on the roof. I certainly uh, there's hope so. a 26% <laughs> federal tax tracks rebate right now for solar. Uh, yeah. tax rebate. So, I mean, it would be great to promote more solar and, and I think it's a broader category energy use, you know, that could also mean wind. Um, I think there are obviously other considerations with wind in terms of bird migration and things like that. But, um, at least for the promotion of solar, I think it's a beneficial topic topic for us to kick around and yeah, that's why more it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more heavy lifting at the planning commission because they're dealing with the the code. Um, but obviously, given that you guys handle variances, that could be something that would come before you. So is Excel to hear your is, is, uh, Excel's got a, a pretty robust community solar program. Is anybody here engaged with Excel on that? Does anybody know? I mean, some people. The Sustainability Advisory Board is pretty connected with Excel and their different programs. Um, you know, they are, of course, going to do another Solarize Netherland, which is where we provided rebates and incentives. But in 2022, right. the goal was to do it with more than just the one approved vendor, which would allow people to really kind of diversify and go the direction they want. Um, so Excel didn't really have an opportunity for us to work with them, but SAB has a very close relationship. Okay, good. Okay, um, thanks for the heads up, Cynthia. This is good to know, but I think you're right. This is on the horizon. Thanks, everyone. Okay, do, um, yeah, thank you, Cynthia. That was great. And uh, please let me know when the Planning Commission is so I can attend that. Uh, do we have any other business? We don't have any other business other than the consideration for those terms that would end and the folks who would, if they want to re up. And uh, uh, I've already mentioned that earlier. So I don't know that we need to spend a lot of time, but certainly reach out to me if you are looking to re up your term and I'll send out a form. You, you would be on your term until uh, June 1st. So. You don't have to worry about it right now. Um, but again, that is the position does, to be open publicly. When does that open up publicly? Miranda, when do you think we would post it? We would post for it, or the, the reappointment, sorry, the in May. So it'll come out okay. the first week of May, allowing people. So we usually do the 21 day application period, and we want to try to bring it before the Board of Trustees at their meeting on June 7th. And so I'd be looking at the first or second week of May to post all vacancies. We could remind you at the April meeting 
and then mm -hmm. next regular meeting after that would be July. So if you apply and get in, then we'll know by July. But Mark Mullins is just you and me till 2025, 2026. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are running the show. <laughs> yeah. All right, sounds good, everybody. Just a friendly reminder, uh, if you, just super fast, right. Mark, just a friendly reminder that Board of Trustee election coming up, nomination petitions are out. If you want to run for the board to get your nomination petitions in by Monday the 24th. All right, thank you for that update. If there's nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Yes. I'll second. Is that Vice Chair Mall? <coughs> okay. Uh, the, yes. Uh, okay. And who is the second? Billy was one of the seconds. Billy? Okay. We can do a voice vote on this one. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Getting faster. Anyone abstaining? Right. Maybe well, next week. Meeting is adjourned at seven thirty two p.m. That was a little good long one, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia, yeah, don't know. We're, let, we're letting me get out of hand, guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Keep up your good work, Cynthia. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You know this yeah. board tends to. Have Shorter meetings, and then after the meeting, when we met in person, they would talk for like forty minutes, just chatting with each other. <laughs> they never Let's get to do see that each other. Sometimes, uh, yeah, it would be nice. So Hopefully the chats are longer than, than later. The yeah, be well. Hopefully. All right, thanks so, everybody. Take care, Great everyone. job. Stay stay thank you, care. Cynthia. Bye bye. Yeah, stay healthy, thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.